Good day, my beloveds. In this video, I want to continue with 2 Corinthians 5, where we are reconciled with God through Jesus Christ. But this video is not meant for everybody because uh, I found that when I shared these kind of videos with the beloveds, uh, many of them didn't understand. And I don't want to confuse people. That's not our mission. Our mission is to bring light. So, in 2 Corinthians 5, the Bible makes it very clear that we will be reconciled with God through Jesus Christ. So, beloved, you will find in that video I stuttered quite a lot because it's very difficult to face God, especially in this light and this group with this immensely powerful souls and minds, spirits that uh, God wants to gather to ensure that the body of Christ remains for Him to have a link to the mind for us to be set free and become one with Him. So the main objective of this is to merely show us how to become one with God. Now, beloved, the 2 Corinthians 5 says that even if you knew Christ after the flesh, you don't know Him after the flesh no more. Now, this is exactly what you can't always mention to everybody, all the, the members on the body, because everybody won't understand it, beloveds. It, it actually... When we take it from a physical perspective, uh, Jesus Christ, if you knew Jesus after the flesh, you don't know him after the flesh no more. Then obviously, many people are going to think, no, but this is this body he's referring to. So that makes Jesus Christ a physical human being again. But it's the same with 1 John 4, where he says, those that say that Jesus Christ didn't come in the flesh are the Antichrist. So... This is something we have to be very clear about because this is the divide line between the spirit and the flesh. Those who do understand and those who don't. So what we have to understand again, beloved, I know I mentioned this a million times, but when the Bible refers to the flesh, it refers to the fleshly understanding of the mind. So how does this work? Jesus is God in flesh. So when the understanding and the wisdom and the power of God enters my mind, when I start to understand the teachings of God spiritually, truly, not merely being baptized with water and we know the truth, that there are many truths, beloved. There are many heavens. I'm talking about the higher heavens, the higher levels of understanding, like people at university and people at primary school. The, the children in the primary school or the students in the primary school have totally different conversations to those who are at university. So I like to bring this to those who are at university. So Jesus Christ is God in flesh. So when that wisdom enters my mind, when I understand and I see, and that doesn't happen overnight. It happens, it's the grace of God, and somebody must understand to bring, bring that light to me. As I said before, beloved, you can't become an engineer if you don't find the engineer. And the better the engineer is that teaches you, the better you're going to be. So, we have to find God, the channel through which God speaks. So if I knew God in the flesh, if I have seen the flesh, if I see the sins of the people, but God is still there, my overplay speaking to me, that's Jesus, God in flesh. If you knew Jesus in the flesh, you don't know him that way anymore because you see past the flesh. You only see the word God speaking to you. You don't see the instrument and that's where we have to be. You don't see the instrument no more, beloved. But please don't be confused. 
don't think because this guy has that office or this spirit has that office that now it's God speaking through him. We must recognize his voice. Jesus said in Luke 8, he says, you have the eye to see, you have the ear to understand. They see, they don't, they look, they don't see, they hear, they don't understand. But those who truly see and those who truly understand, and at that stage, beloved, sorry for interrupting myself, and at that stage, they themselves didn't even see. Why do you speak in parables to us? What do you mean we see? We in John 14, where are you going? We're going to the Father. And he says, and now you have seen the Father. They don't know what he, they didn't know what he's talking about. But he spoke from God. And that is what we have to see. We have to find the channel through which God speaks. And that God will make his abode within me. That is God in my flesh. What am I then, beloved? I am then Jesus Christ, am I not? Because as soon as that light is formed within me, then God will use me to work through. Because now the, the fleshly thoughts subsided and the light took over my mind. And that's where the end part of this, this journey is. When we advance to that level and we can see God speaking to us, no flesh. I knew him after the flesh. Yes, you knew him after the flesh. But now we know him after the flesh no more. Like the one beloved said, his Sunday school child or his, one of the family, one of his family members that, that's in the, in the Sunday school saw her first vision. Praise the Lord for that. And I'm not, I'm saying that from the bottom of my heart. That is what we have to secure, beloveds. That's what we have to keep intact for those who come after us. We must build a spirit kingdom for them because we have a spirit God and he wants a spirit flock to lead because the way it's going now, everything's going to fall apart, beloved. And God will shut this down. And for a few years it will continue until another prophecy comes out and the church will start again. But you know for a fact that it can't continue the way it is now. And that's what we have to do. The scattered sheep has to be made known that God is there for them. So we have to bring this light to them. They must know there is a core growing somewhere. And that is us. If I don't know if there's something else going on like this in the world, beloved. And I pray to God that it is. But this is one of the most, it, this is what we were born for. This is what we took this life for. This is why God put us in the church to secure this. Maybe only a few. But I don't want to continue in that line. But let us just continue with the spirit, beloved. So when God takes on my flesh, when I understand this light and I start seeing, because you must remember, it's phase after phase. You see, and then it doesn't make, yeah, that's fine. And then you see, and it's like yin yin. And it's a different, and then you advance all the time. And you become more spiritual and more spiritual and more spiritual. And when you reach this level, now you understand. Okay, so God made his abode within me. The truth lies within me. What do I become now, beloved? The son of God, Jesus Christ, the Savior. Because we are reconciled to God, to the creator of everything that exists. Beloved, physically as well as spiritually. The astral, the seven heavens and above. The Bible mentions 13 heavens and the other books, the scrolls. And they are, 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 I'm very fond of those books. But we have to understand that it's way above our human comprehension. And we have to ascend above the human comprehension. Is it not? God, because God is above all heavens. Paul says in Ephesians 4, those who descended, those who conquered the flesh, ascended above all heavens, beloved, above the apostle, into an ocean of pure light. And that is why we have to understand 
that you are Jesus Christ. You will reconcile God within somebody else or God through you will reconcile that soul within that body to Him by conquering the flesh within Him. Because, beloved, Jesus Christ is God, pure God, the creator of everything, in my flesh. But it's, it's too much to comprehend always. So it takes a long time for my mind to comprehend this. And then this Christ, which is the path which leads to God, the way of conquering the mind, will teach the mind to become a friend of God, to become a friend of the light. Because at first you will always argue. Now, why this? How this? What happened? But when, you, when your mind becomes a, a friend of God, a friend of the light, that's when you become the Jesus. Because now you are willing to die. Because you know, I have to get rid of my mind. That's what's standing between me and God. And how will I reconcile with God? Jesus Christ. In other words, the members, those that know, they will help me to conquer this mind. And beloved, believe me, there will be thousands upon thousands of people teaching you that won't know what you know. The words that come through their own mouths will create you and they will turn their backs on the light at some stage. They didn't even understand what they taught you themselves through their own mouths. And that is why it's so important. You don't see God in flesh no more. You see God through Christ, the Word, the light. No more flesh. You don't even see through whose mouth these words come, beloved. You just see, this is my Father. This is what I am. This is what I have to become. This is how I will get rid of my mind. And that is how we will become this God. That is how we will become this, this body through which God will create Himself within others. Because, beloved, Jesus Christ, again, sorry, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. So as the flesh goes, now remember the two combined, the, the God, the light, and the flesh is Jesus Christ. That's the Savior. Because now you're going to save others. But you're saving yourself first, actually. Because now you... You, you have to get rid of your own flesh, your own fleshly mind first. So now you go to the cross. Where, beloved? Firstly, in your own mind. Because you have to crucify your own mind. You have to crucify yourself. And that's why Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. With a crucifixion, beloved, was Jesus crucified alone? No, there were murderers and robbers with him. And who's that? That's us. That's me. I will be crucified with Christ, but my fleshly thoughts, my bones, my structures, because the bone is the order. That's why the, the lamb, the, the lambs, uh, Jesus' bones were not broken, but the other two were. My bones, my structure, my way of understanding, that has to be broken apart. I have to die, and it takes a long time to die, isn't it? Jesus died quickly, because He wants to die. He wants to get rid of the flesh, but we... Our minds, that flesh, and God. So that flesh of our flesh takes a long time to die, to die, a long, much longer time. And that's why the bones have to be broken. It's painful, beloveds, but it happens within ourselves. We have to conquer this mind. We have to let God grow within us. And when all flesh is conquered, beloved, what remains? God, not Jesus. Jesus is the beginning of the path. God is the end result because we reconcile to God through Jesus Christ. We don't reconcile with Jesus to, through Jesus Christ. We become Jesus Christ and because Jesus Christ is the path that leads to God, as we walk this path of dying, the flesh re remains behind and we ascend and ascend and ascend, less flesh, less flesh, more light, more light, more light, until we become the light. And that is how it truly is. That is why we can't share this with everybody. They'll think we're crazy. But you become the creator. Because you will create through others. 
and you will create within others. But it begins with Jesus Christ. So the main objective is when we become Christ, we, the flesh dies and become the creator. We become God. As soon as all the flesh is gone, nothing remains but God, beloved. So, please, beloved, if there's something that I missed, please tell me. And if there's something we have to add, please let us do so. And, and I'm on my knees before all of, all of the, um, I mean, I'm looking God in the face. And I honestly and truly are honored to speak to spirits and a creator in the way that you are placed there for us. Thank you very much, beloved. God bless you.